And continuing with our magazine cover design, you'll now, you'll now need to add a nameplate to your magazine. So I'm going to do Billie Eilish in a Rolling Stone magazine. So I'm going to put I'm going to look up Rolling Stone nameplate in my Google Images if I could spell it correctly. So that didn't work. So I'm going to look up Rolling Stone magazine logo. And again, I'm going to make sure that my size is set to large. And I'm going to just choose the first one that looks good. And this one says it's 3000, <coughs> excuse me, it's 3000 by 671. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into, whoops, go into my Photoshop file and hit paste. You can grab at the corners and adjust the size if you need if you need to. If you find a nameplate that has the background still on it, you'll just remove the background using your magic wand tool and you know clicking in the white area and deleting it. Let me see if I can find one um, to show you that part too. So like here's one. Oh, that's not one. Um, Here's one. So, well, no, that's not one either. Weird. Um, let's look up JPEG. You shouldn't look up JPEG, but I just want to show you this real quick. So, if you can't find a name plate for your magazine and it comes with the white like this, you would just you know, hit enter and go into your magic wand tool, turn that layer on, and delete all the white. So just click in the white and hit delete. But hopefully you can find one that doesn't have the white background by looking up PNG or vector or something of, this, of the sort. So I'm gonna delete that layer. So at this point you should have your two layers. You have your Billie Eilish layer, and you have your Rolling Stone nameplate. So most magazines put the nameplate behind the head, um, depending on you know what your image looks like. But most of them will have this part of her head overlapping the nameplate. And to do that, all you would need to do is just click on your layer two in Photoshop and move it behind the photo. And once you get the look that you're going for, you just hit save. File save. And you bring it into InDesign. So if you're in draft mode, you just double click this little error symbol and it will automatically update for you. So sometimes nameplates have different colors on them. So Rolling Stone, they're usually always red, but in the event that you want to change the color of your nameplate, to match her photo or, or something like that. Maybe you have like a St. Patrick's Day theme or whatever it is and you wanna make it green. You can do that in Photoshop. So if you open up Photoshop, you turn on your nameplate layer, just activate it. You click effects and do color overlay. You can mess with the settings here and see which one will make it right. So let's see what normal does. Nope. Darken. Screen doesn't look bad. So you can go through these these settings, and depending on your nameplate color, it will change accordingly. Oh, there we go. Hue is a good one. All right, let's do that one. So we're going to turn on Hue, 
and you can uh, let's choose a color any color you want and there's green so we chose hue and green and you just click the color square and just go through you know until you find a color that you like and hit OK and then you would also hit OK here so if you want to know what it would look like without it you can just turn the little eyeball on color overlay and turn it off or turn it back on to see what it looks like and if it's something that you like you would just hit save and bring that into InDesign another thing you can do is add texture to the nameplate so Rolling Stone isn't really a good one to add texture to because it has the stroke and it also has the drop shadow and you don't want to cover all of that but if we were to do like GQ magazine or Vogue, Vogue is a good one actually let's um, find my URL so let's look up Vogue nameplate images So I'm going to copy this and bring it into Photoshop. So instead of Rolling Stone, I'm going to put her in Vogue magazine. Going to increase the size of, of the nameplate. Hit enter. I'm going to remove the white in that layer. So remove the white, hit delete click hit delete do command D to deselect you can also go to select deselect and I'm going to move this up and also behind her head so let's say I wanted some kind of sparkly texture on this I can go into Google again and look up gold texture let's see what the resolution is so it's 1300 by 1866 I'm going to copy this I'm going to go into my Photoshop file and I'm going to paste right now it's behind her that's okay but I'm just going to move this layer up and I want it to cover the entire nameplate and I hit enter so before you hit command alt G I don't know the setting to look it up in Photoshop unfortunately but on your keyboard it's command alt G on a PC it might be control alt G but it's something of those two so what it does is it turns that texture on to the nameplate shadow to your nameplate so you would turn on your layer 3 go to effects and turn on drop shadow you can increase the darkness of the drop shadow you can increase the distance maybe even the spread and once you have what you like you just hit OK and again you would save file save <clears throat> open up InDesign and as long as you're in draft mode you will see this error symbol double click your error symbol and it will automatically populate in here and then you would go to file save So let's say you want to have a photo that actually has the background in it. You don't want to get rid of the background completely. You just want to keep the background. But you still need to have the nameplate behind the head. In the event that that happens, you can basically go back to the step one where you're removing the background, except you make two copies of the layer. So I'm going to go to this quick mask and delete it just like I'm starting from square one I'm going to drag it to the trash can and delete apply mask to layer before removing nope and just I'm going to hit delete 
So it brings that background back up. So if I find a photo and I really, really like the background, I don't want to delete it, I just want the nameplate to be behind her head, then I would copy the layer. So I'd bring this down to my little plus sign. And I'm going to turn one off just for now, but just knowing I have the two layers is the first step. So I'm going to turn one off by hitting the eyeball. And I'm going to start deleting around her head. So the nameplate is basically going to be just from like the top of her ear all the way up. So I'm only going to focus on deleting that area. So I'm going to turn my quick mask layer on, turn my brush on, and start deleting. Again, this can be pretty tedious. Don't go as quickly as me, but <clears throat> I just want to show you this um, trick real quick. Zoom in. She's got like a halo effect going on right now, but I will paint it back on. Turn on white and paint her hair back on so it doesn't look so halo ish. All right, so at this point, that looks it looks okay. So I'm going to turn on her other layer, and you'll see there are two layers here. There's one with the background behind her head removed, and the other one is the original. So I want to take my let's put her back down Rolling Stone. Actually, I'll, I'll do we'll do the nameplate. So these two layers are connected, so I want to make sure to move them up together. So I'm going to hold down Shift. This is only because there's a texture here. So I'm going to hold down shift and select both layer four and three and move them between these two layers. So now I have the layer with behind her head removed. I have the original layer and I have the nameplate in between them. You can see here the hair is a little bit weird so I can go back up to the quick mask layer and paint that back on. So it doesn't look so wonky. And just keep adjusting it until it's the effect that you want. If you don't like the Vogue anymore, you can turn that off. Move your Rolling Stone layer up here. Turn it on. You can turn your color overlay off. And now you have a Rolling Stone cover where it keeps the background of the photo, it keep, and it keeps her hair intact and it has the nameplate in between the two layers. So I have layer one original, layer of her with the, with the background removed, and the nameplate in between the two. So I'm gonna hit File, Save. And I'm gonna put them side by side so you can see. I'm gonna go from the bleed line to the bleed line. Go to File, Place and paste her photo. So here are the two, the two options for your design. This one doesn't go all the way to the bleed line like I want it to, so I'm gonna right click and go to fitting, fill frame proportionally. So it goes all the way to my bleed line. So there you have it. There are your two different options, one with a color and one with the background completely removed that's all white.